Security expert and global affairs analyst Sam Fati joins me now to discuss the situation in Sri Lanka. Sam, uh, glad to have you join us at this time. You've heard about the short and long term plans put forward by the Sri Lankan president. How convincing do this sound to you in first restoring normalcy and second tra tackling terrorism in the country? Well, I do not think the check on what we would clearly say is immigration or immigrants, looking at the number of permanent residents that they have and those that are supposed to be in the country is going to resolve the issue. What ISIS is doing, because they are claiming the attack, and from the beginning, the attack carried out all their armament. What they are doing is not sending in their people into South Asia or any other nation. What they are doing is they are recruiting locally within um, these communities that are radicalized to carry out their attacks and they would help them do this by radicalizing them. And that's the propaganda method that they are using. So what they need to do is to quickly act on the intelligence that they have received. And of course, when they receive this intelligence, mind you, even if they act quickly, the attack could have still been carried out because it was during a very short period. They only received it on the 4th of April. And um, this is a very little known group. I think what the Sri Lankan administration or the government um, uh, where their shortcoming was, I would not call it a failure, was that they tried to treat this very domestically from the beginning. The Islamic Council in Sri Lanka have on several occasions contacted the government about the activities of their um, national Tawhid Jamaat group. And they didn't arrest nobody, they didn't take action, and this is what it leads to. They should have learned from other countries that have used the same political method to address these issues. But as it is now, the ringleader of that group was, uh, is said to have been killed in that attack. Could that restore some sanity? That's not going to restore any sanity. I mean, this group actually reminds me of Boko Haram uh, in Nigeria. Let me just give it a little bit of a local context. You have a particular leader of the group, let's say in the case of Boko Haram, who was Mohammed Yusuf. When he died, most people thought that, okay, that would be the end of the group. But it led to a more or less very radical guy, Abu Bakr Shekau, taking over. Now, just that one person, that the leader of the group has been killed, doesn't mean that somebody that is more radicalized, more brutal, is not going to take over. And when groups start get, getting help from, uh, from abroad, especially from groups like ISIS or Al-Qaeda and its affiliates, it means that these groups are likely to carry out more deadly attacks. What the government in Sri Lanka needs to do is to take robust, aggressive action in cutting off the head of the snake, which is they need to get rid of their leaders. This is what happened with Al-Qaeda, when most of their leaders have been taken out. While Al-Qaeda has not been extinguished, it has been demoralized. So with ISIS, for example, and its affiliates, and groups that they are uh, uh, supporting now, like the National Tawhid Jamaat, while they are, uh, so one or two of their leaders have, have died, not most of their key and influential leaders have been taken away. This tells us how far the reach of groups like ISIS could be. While they do not have any area or land to control, whether in Syria or Iraq, they are internationally reaching out by, uh, by radicalizing people in Southeast Asia. There have been numerous reports about this. So Sri Lanka must make sure that this group and its leaders are entirely taken out in order to completely handicap them. All right. In uh, tackling matters of this nature, uh, there are usually suggestions about the carrot and stick approach. What approach do you consider as being uh, uh, most appropriate uh, considering this, uh, uh, what's going on in uh, Sri Lanka? When it reaches the stage where you have international support or backing from radical groups and you carry out successive very serious dangerous attacks, of this nature that is claiming the lives of uh, many people, it goes beyond the current right now. And, I, the, and that is why I, I said they have to take aggressive method towards this, which means now they have to use the stick. And once they gain some leverage, then if they want to use the carrot, they could. But they need to make sure that they understand that in as much as they want to use the, um, the carrot, which is the method I believe they have used, and that included ignoring some of the reports that they got from the Islamic Council in Sri Lanka. It is time for them to use the stick right now and send a call on the And if you consider the impact that could have on uh, the over 20 million Sri Lankans? Well, I, again, this is not a group that you know has, is, is, is spread across the country. A majority of the Muslims in Sri Lanka are against this group. They have been opposing it. But because of the fact that the government has ignored this group for a very long time, 
they have been able to get some support, including financial support, from just a minority few influence that are very rich people who are very conservative in that part of Sri Lanka and in other parts of Southeast Asia, which means they need to restructure um, the way they look at terrorism financing. Terrorism financing happens locally a lot too. So they need to go look at that system and see how best they can call it. They need to pretty much handicap them. But if they take an aggressive method and people fear that a lot more people are going to die, no, they can still follow human rights. They, they, they make sure that they investigate. They make sure that they go undercover to reach to these people and pretty much uh, handicap their organization. It doesn't mean that they have to go on an all-out war. There are different ways of operations that they can do to deal with this issue. Because the world is with Sri Lanka as they work to tackle terrorism in their climb. Security expert and global affairs analyst Sam Fati, thank you for speaking to us.